This is something that I think Bernie Sanders does better than any other politician, is their attempt to try and reach out to a larger audience. Senator Bernie Sanders, a man that has had a quite an influence on my life and the direction has taken over the past several years, randomly put me, or at least my voice, in his latest video. And it really caught me off guard. So I'm going to uh, play this for you. It's about his new position as chair of the Senate Help Committee. They deal with uh, health care, uh, education, other important issues. But this video is pretty good. Minus, you know, or not minus, but <laughs> apart from just me being in it, it's a good video. And then I'll get to, you know, how I, f how I feel about this as a commentator and someone that's been... Um, definitely influenced in a, in a major way by Bernie Sanders. Independent Senator Bernie Sanders is preparing for a new fight within his new role as the chairman of the Senate Health Committee. The new chairman of the Senate Health Committee has a message for the pharmaceutical industry that they're probably not going to like. Today, we announce loudly and clearly that we will no longer accept the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. Sanders wrote a Fox News op-ed where he said, quote, greedy pharma rips off Americans. It's, I think, very shrewd of Bernie to go after, quote, greedy pharma in Fox News. This is something that I think Bernie Sanders does better than any other politician, is their attempt to try and reach out to a larger audience. You have drug companies who are ripping off people right and left. He is honestly the first politician I've seen aggressively push for consequences for these drug manufacturers. These are the remains of 26-year-old Alex Smith. He gave his life because he couldn't afford his insulin. In this country, the drug companies get away with murder, and I should say literally murder. Alec passed away alone in his apartment. He died from diabetic ketoacidosis from rationing his insulin. Can you believe that in America today, people are dying because of the high cost of prescription drugs? Which industry spends more money on lobbying and campaign contributions than any other industry. Anyone here want to make a guess? It's the pharmaceutical health products. If all we could do is take their money, we should be ashamed of ourselves. You can't hide your drug prices are homicide. Bunch of fun quotes from drug maker lobbyists saying, don't worry, we'll be ready, we, but we do expect that we're going to take a beating. This is a consultant for Forma who says, we're seeing companies intensify their proactive education and advocacy efforts while also preparing to deal with fresh attacks from the senator. We are going to significantly lower prescription drug costs in America. We are tired of getting ripped off. So how about that? Solid video. I mean, again, not because I'm in it, but it's a really good video because it showcases or it really highlights the greed of Big Pharma and Bernie's history on this issue. I mean, clips going back to the 90s. This is this is largely why I got into doing this stuff is because of Bernie Sanders. So back in 2015, I ran as a political candidate. And then after uh, I lost that race, I decided I wanted to continue you know, discussing these issues, trying to educate people. So I launched the YouTube channel and Bernie was like a part of my branding. He, there was at the end of every video, there was a, a Bernie Sanders drawing. So heavily influenced by Bernie, of course, uh, seeing that fight that he's had for decades with the same message since the seventies, we're talking about like newspaper clippings in the seventies and the eighties, you see clips and videos as, as uh, when, when he was mayor of, of Burlington, Vermont. Then at the 90s, when he joined Congress and the 2000s, like the man's history, the, his, his, his record is unbeatable. Nobody even comes close, which is why it was so disappointing <laughs> that he did not become president, because you're, you're not going to have an opportunity to have someone like that again. You know, you're going to, I'm sure eventually there'll be some good candidates, good people will come up, but there's always going to be that little bit of doubt. Can we really trust this person? Do the, are they really honest in this fight? Bernie Sanders, you can check the record. Go back 40 years. Yes, you can trust him. It's very hard to compete with uh, someone like that. But, you know, look, look, so first I want to give credit here to just uh, Jessica Batt um, on Twitter. She alerted me to this clip. I had no idea. This is the first person that, that messaged me about it, and I checked it out. And it, it when I watched the video, it... Really caught me off guard. I mean, the fact that I, my voice opens the video, very weird, very weird. But uh, it's good to see that 
people on staff there with Bernie Sanders watch the show. Maybe I should start uh, giving some more advice <laughs> on what to do here. Maybe, maybe it's time for a primary challenge. I'm just saying. I'm just, I, I'm just saying. Not, not sure Biden is the best choice. That said, his speech last night, I gave commentary alive. Uh, good optics on that speech, but it's a speech, uh, you know. Whatever, whole different discussion. But I, Bernie Sanders should still be president. Should still try, try as long as he can. But that's my position. Anyways, uh, look, in terms of a of being a commentator and being as objective as I can covering this stuff, it's important to note my influences, right? Like, I I have been critical of Bernie and, and various strategies or, or failed strategies and, and messaging around certain things. But yeah, I love Bernie Sanders. <laughs> like I'm, not, I'm not hiding it. The difference is... It, if any, if any commentator, any person that covers politics, any reporter, if anyone claims they are objective, perfectly objective, they are lying to you. It's impossible to be objective. You have things influence you in your life, whether it's your upbringing, whether it's your current status, whether there's money coming in, you know, whatever it is, there are influences in your life that that lead you to take certain positions and feel certain ways about issues when it comes to politics. It's about, are you honest with people about what influences you have? So it's one thing, you know, cable news goes out and they pretend places like CNN, they never discuss their biases, never. And they pretend to discuss these issues from a, from a, an objective place. When you know the vast majority of issues they cover, the framing around them are very pro-business. Very rarely do they have a pro-working class, pro-union perspective on an issue. It's one thing if they told you up front, hey, we are a massive corporation. We have inherent biases here on these issues. So keep that in mind as we discuss these topics and our hiring decisions here in terms of who's discussing them on television. If they were honest about that perspective, Fine. Nothing wrong with that perspective. Have that perspective, that, that pro-corporate perspective, but be honest about it. They're not honest about it. And that is what is very different with when it comes to independent uh, channels on YouTube. Not all of them, of course, but, you know, a lot of us try to be honest with our audience about what how we feel about these issues and, and, and what brings us to these conclusions. So, you know, all my videos, I show you all the sources. I, I, I lay out the facts very clearly. And within those videos, I discuss how I feel about certain things. And they're always from a, a, a working class perspective. My view is always, and this is when it comes to even things like sports, <laughs> I'm always with the underdog. I, I want to fight for people that, that don't have, that don't often have the opportunities that others have. So that's the perspective that I come from. And I'm honest about that. And I'm honest about, about people like Bernie Sanders being a massive influence on me and, and my politics. So as long as you know that going in, then you can judge for yourself whether or not you feel like my commentary adds any value to what I'm doing. Whereas others are either uh, dishonest about um, being objective or dishonest about what influences them, and they ultimately take positions based on other issues or, or other, largely money, <laughs> you know, especially when it comes to the right. The, there are there's a lot of reporting around certain commentators on the right not really feeling or not really agreeing with what they're discussing, but they say certain things because they get a massive paycheck for doing so. And I, my position on that has always been, it does not matter what your personal, as a commentator, it doesn't matter how you personally feel about an issue. What matters is how you use your platform and your, your voice, how you impact other people. If you have a platform, that's what matters. You can't then deflect and say, oh, well, sure, I've only uh, pushed all this trash onto people, all these lies. I push, you know, I don't know, for example, the support for Trump or something, but I personally believe healthcare for all. You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> that doesn't mean shit. Your personal beliefs don't mean anything. It's how do you use your platform? How do you discuss these issues? How do you inform people or do you inform people? But uh, whatever, I'm going off on a tangent here. I just thought it was cool <laughs> in a uh, Bernie Sanders video. And I'm going to be honest about it. It was freaking cool. 
and it's uh we will see we will see uh, what bernie can do with his new position of course it's tough to get anything actually done when you don't have the numbers in the house but bernie keep using this platform keep using your platform and there's always an opportunity to run again